Hi everyone, I recently had the question on how could someone restrict a form submission if two choices are already been selected and an item submitted to SharePoint. So what do I mean by that? Um, let's say I'm building a project report. So it's a project report form and someone comes in and they may select the project and they select the reporting period. Once that has been submitted, um, like this one here, it says Bruin Group in June 2020, someone should not be able to put another project report in for the Bruin Group in June 2020. They'd have to select July 2020. So how do we how do we stop that from happening? How do we put a a validation rule in there? Well, it's um, it's not immediately obvious, and we'll just step through how I would do this uh, in this video here. So since the lookup um, control, it, it it can't it has it has one single filter. Um, and the lookup function only supports one single property from one single item. How do we check for two properties in multiple items? It's actually quite interesting how you fix this. So what you can do is combine these two properties into a variable and then you'll do a lookup on the whole list to see if those, if that, that, that key has already been created. So how do we go about doing that? Well, when I'm building a form, I recommend always putting a label on and outputting your variables first. So a variable could be um, the, the controls you're using or um, some logic you're building. But what we're doing here is project and reporting period. These two controls, I'll output them on the screen. So I go Bruin Group and June 2020. We can see these are both lookup columns. So these are both lookup columns to choices. So projects and reporting period. So when they come back through to here, the way SharePoint stores the data is the ID semicolon hash which is a separator and then the label now for us we only really want the label not the ID and the separator we just want the label so how do we go about doing those two separated out well let's create a variable so we can get an idea of what our report name should look like so we're going to call this uh, report name and what I actually need to do is a parse lookup and a parse lookup basically separates either the ID or the label from that, that lookup uh, control so I'm going to say project and make sure you type in form.project because then it's going to get the control. If you put um, SharePoint columns.project, you'll get the SharePoint column. So um, the, the controls updated, whereas the controls obviously hasn't had the data submitted yet. So form.project uh, and you go false for ID or true for um the label. So then we've got to go um, plus and double quotes uh, dash double quotes plus and then again parse lookup and we say form dot reporting period and true. So what we're doing is we're grabbing those two lookup controls we saw before. So let's go and create that and we'll put that into our label. Come through to here and we'll put our report name. There we go. Go to preview and so we should actually see when I select Bruin Group and June 2020. So here comes my uh, report name. So that's kind of helpful. So what I think would be useful is to have this put into the title. So I come to my rules and let's say add new, uh, set title. <clears throat> so we say uh, when project is filled and when reporting period is filled, then the title uh, value is insert variables report name and we don't really need an else condition I don't think we need to clear it out because I would recommend if you're using this field as a piece of your logic make sure you set this to read only you don't want someone else changing that that control data and then your your, your logic doesn't work so let's come back to here Bruin group and June 2020 once I've selected both those it populates out with the variable we had here now that's all well and good We've got a we've got a we've got a report name. Now what we want to know is has anyone created a Bruin Group June 2020? And obviously we can see here that someone has created this. So how do we stop someone from pressing submit if this has already been taken? If this if this property has already been taken or this report has already been been created? What we need to do is create another um, another variable. So we go look up projects, and so you go look up lookup and there's a bunch of different lookups user profile lookup parse lookup which we've looked at and the lookup function which looks up to SharePoint uh, 
SharePoint lists. So the way the syntax works with this is you put in your list first. So project site, uh, project report, there we go, report. Next, you're filtering on the column you want to find the data in. So you'd say uh, title. Next, you pass in what's what's the what's the um, the filter. What's what are you trying to find? We're trying to find this specifically. And how do we build this? Through the other variables. So it was report name, report name. And then once you've got that, what do you want to return? And so for us, it's going to be really helpful just to know. Is, is there another one of these or not? And so what we're going to do is just say, look, yeah, just give me back the title. Because if I go and search for project report in title and I've created a report name based on the, pro the project and the reporting period when I'm creating my form, and if that doesn't exist in the list, it's going to come back empty, which means, sure, go ahead and create that report. If it goes and finds a match, it's going to come back and go, actually, this reporter exists, can't submit it. So that's how that works. So let's go and create that. Let's put that into our label here. So we'll call this um, up, is it? Uh, up projects. And let's see if this works. So Bruin Group, June 2020. Now what we can see is Bruin Group, June 2020 has come back. It's found a match because Bruin Group, June 2020 exists. So if I was to change this to July, it's come back. Hang on a sec. What have we gone wrong? Oh, that's the report name, not the pro lookup projects. So what we should see here is Bruin Group, June 2020. We should have another label below this and nothing's appearing. So what's gone wrong in our in our lookup? Let's have a look. Lookup, project reports with an S. There we go. So project reports. Always check variables. Make sure you've got things correct. Uh, Bruin Group, June 2020. Now there we go. So this one's just building the report name to be populated in here. This one is actually giving us a confirmed match because Bruin Group June 2020 exists. If I change this to July, it no longer exists. There is no match. So just to make this super clear, um, report name. Hold that and we'll say um, match found on. Hold that. Okay, so match found on, nothing. We've got a hyphen in there because the variable's always calculating that based on the two properties that are empty. So we go Bruin Group, so it's report name, June 2020, and a match has been found on, Bruin Group, June 2020. If I put July, nothing found. And we could get more advanced and put logic around when to show this or hide this, but we don't actually need this label. This is purely just to do the logic to see if it exists or not. So finally, now that we know that we can actually say, okay, we can actually check the logic to make sure there's matches on it. What's the next step? Well, we can come into rules and we can say, um, check if project exists. And we say, um, how should we do this? Uh, let me think. So we're saying, we're saying if, if this, if this uh, project uh, lookup projects comes back as blank then it's good to submit but it's not then we need to do a check so what we could probably even do we could say look up projects you can actually say something like variables uh, project reports and you can actually say length so we might just say uh, length and this would come back as a number now it's not going to match the string so we'd have to do something a bit tricky so we either we could just do it in the rules so we could say Add new, and we say um, check if project exists. Many different ways around this. You could do it many different ways, but um, we can create a variable, say integer uh, project check. You go length. This will make sense when I finish it. Length, and then we put into the variable. Uh, is it look up? Look up projects. So we're checking the length of the response of that. So if lookup projects comes back with a match, it's going to come back with a length, uh, with a with a variable which is a string which is the report name, and it's going to be longer uh, longer than zero basically. So it can create an insert, and is greater than zero. Then what you might say is reporting period show validation message. You might say um, this uh, a report for this project has already been 
completed for this period. Now you could do this a number of different ways. You could have different variables, different formulas, length is blank, is not blank, but this is just one way I've just come up with right now. So go and create that, go to preview, come through to here, we go Bruin Group and we're June 2020. Okay, it's got a match and I press submit. Okay, a project, uh, a report for this project has already been completed for this period. So then I come to July and the error goes away. So now we don't need this label anymore because we've done our logic, we've understood what's going on. So we can come back to here and we can delete this label. So now our, our project report looks nice and simple. We can go and press publish. And once that's done, we're going to actually test it out with a few submissions to make sure that there's no errors, which is always important. You want to always test your forms to make sure there's no issues. Okay, so we know that there is a Bruin group June 2020 and a project is on track. And press submit. Okay, a report for this project has already been completed for this period. Damn. Okay, well, I'm going to do a July 2020. Press submit. Perfect. So I've done a report for Bruin Group June, July. Come back again. Bruin Group June. Submit. Damn. December. Not a problem. June. Report. Report. And so as you can see, as I s switch between the, the different items, it keeps telling me if it's correct or not. So then I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do the Ripon Group in December 2020. Just to show I'm not lying. Press submit. Now we've got that one. Do that one again. Let's do a few. Uh, we'll do Bruin Group, December 2020. And then we'll do one more. Ripon Group. Bruin Group, December 2020. Submit. Okay. Uh, Ripon Group. Submit. No good. Report. There we go. So that's a way where you can validate has a report for two properties already been created. And it also gives you a nice way of actually seeing the name of it. You can see Ripon Group report for November 2020. Um, and you've also got um, the pieces of metadata here from other um, areas. So that's how you can ensure uh, uniqueness on the submission based on uh, one or more properties or, or two or more properties really. It could be concatenating many properties if you need to. Um, so hopefully you find that useful. Uh, certainly let me know in the comments or um, if you can find me on community, certainly uh, reach out to me on community or in uh, user voice or in email. Hope you find that useful. Let me know in the comments. Cheers.